Okay, with movie number five for Mad Mapper, we're just going to put things together and map the surfaces. I've just moved my um, quadrants around here or my screen view for the output input, just so I've got a reasonable size to work with. Um, obviously the bigger the monitor the easier it is to fit in there, but just for the sake of these videos, I'm just going to work quite small. Now I'm going to add just some square quadrants to make it nice and simple. And I'm just going to give this uh, maybe just uh, one so I can take it through it. Um, I'm not going to worry about actually mapping to fit things in the center more. So for this particular video is just to, to map the shapes so they're going to fit the different areas of what I'm projecting to. Now, as I mentioned, this example here is if you just photographed the, the background you're ready to project onto, you're going to still need to add the finesse once you get into a live situation. But at least we can, based on the view that we're working with, we can go and map a few shapes in here. Now, I'm not going to do all of them. I'm just going to um, just get a few surfaces up there so we can see what's going on, just get a feel for how this works. Okay, so I'm going to go to another one now. Make sure we don't use mask, stay with the quadrant. I'm going to call this uh, surface 2. Basically, I'm just going around in, a, in an ordered fashion to get it working. And um, now I'm going to map this shape to get it working. Plonk that one in there. Plonk that one into the X segment there. I'm going to add this into this segment. Now you're probably noticing that I'm I'm not taking it where it would actually fall behind, but basically because the projector wouldn't be able to see that anyway. So that's where I can control how this actually looks and what's going to be seen from the projection. That's why it's good to have a good example of what you want to project onto first. Just make sure that maps in alright. So we'll add another one. Let's give that to Oh, three for this file. Return key. And just take this through and map the shape. I'm just going to put it into view. And uh, just a couple more to put in there. That four. Place this over uh, basically on that side. Nicely mapped in there. Actually, it just uh, jumps in. I've got the magnet on as well, by the way. Just uh, Snap it into place, does a good job. Just a couple more. Up to five now. Turn that. And um, and start mapping up all of these shapes. That one will just go off the screen a bit there. And just one more I want to put in just to get this finished. Number six, turn key. And we're just going to plonk that in, just like so. Now the advantage too is if you have got it reasonably close, it's only just a mild tweaking of it to get the get the file fully working. Probably just need to take that a bit higher to fit it nicely in there. Okay, I'm just going to save the file at this stage. Good, just a good thing to do. So we've basically got all our surfaces in place here. 
and I'm essentially ready to add in my new file. Save once more. I'm going to go back to my files now, and this is where I'm going to load in my movie. So just under the import media, take it through to the movie format, click that drag and movie that I had before, and that's loaded in here in the movie section as you can see. Just before I do that, I'm just going to just check on my view to see what's happening out here. And I'll just pull that out the side here. So you can see how everything's mapped in place at the moment. Just bring it back out again, and I simply just double click to change over to the movie format. And there is my movie in place. Now this is where I actually need to go through um, and basically position each of these files. So if I go back into the movie format here, click on that, I'm going to go just to surface one, and that's where I might um, just want to zoom onto maybe an aspect of the dragon there. Now if I do need more room as I'm working with that, I can slide across and just expand that to fit. I might do that just so I can see this a little bit more clearly. Um, I'm now going to go on to Quadrant 2, and on Quadrant 2 I'm going to just utilise maybe a little bit of the, uh, the wall here. I want to play that up. And just bring that in. And that's Quadrant 2, and you can see quite a different view here. Quadrant 3. Um, well, actually, just over to the surface here. Got that surface around the wrong way a little bit. Um, and I'm just going to take this through and um, zoom in a little more closely, maybe on the light source that's just here. Or actually, that's the end. I might concentrate on the fire right through to here. So you can see how easy it is to put this together and just change it at any time. Back to quadrant four. This is where I'll just concentrate on the light source this time. Maybe a little bit more defined. Maybe the light reflecting from the fire. Quadrant 5, that's where I'll go back onto an, another dragon here. And uh, just quadrant 6. Just out of view here, I might uh, just click on that to see it again. And I'm going to go back and go right onto the dragon's head just so we can see what's happening. Just a little bit further up. Okay, I'll just bring this view back so we can see a little more clearly and just increase it. The other thing I want to do now is we're not going to have that background in this particular view. So I'll just unlock it and just turn it off and lock it again. And now I'm just going to minimize that and just see what my background projection will be. So you can see how you can so easily control all of these shapes. We've got the fire at the end at whatever size we want it. The secret is to have a reasonably good resolution file to begin with and then choosing any segment from it. Okay, now if I was just to load back in our file again, if I go back here, and just so we can see where the background fits with that. And um, then I'll just go and turn that back on. So we can see how all those segments fit again. Let's turn that off once more and go back to my file here and just back to the dragon scene. Obviously, all we need to do is get out there and project it live to see it in actual production.